Pokemon. The game where you kidnap and imprison creatures who then will brutally fight on behalf of their owner in hopes they stay strong enough to never have to spend the rest of their lives trapped forever in a box within a computer. Rest assured ladies and gentlemen, we are the good guys here. But what if I did not use creatures but instead just use robots and machines? Could I beat every gym leader, slay every titan and conquer every team star base in Paldea? Let's not forget I'd want to become champion and beat the true fun final boss of the game, Professor Turo. Also keep in mind, I'll be using hardcore Nuzlocke rules that are on the screen now, plus I'll ban terrestrializing and set up moves to add that extra challenge. So with the rules out of the way, will I succeed or will I fail? Let's find out. The game starts as normal as Director Clavel tosses out some Pokemon for us to choose from, but none of these guys qualify as a robot or machine, so I want nothing to do with them. However, it's not long until we do find ourselves a robot Pokemon just washed away on the beach. Not only that, but this guy looks powerful, but it turns out he's just a glorified bike and can't actually participate in battles. You're pathetic. Okay, looks like I'll need to take matters into my own hands. And if you're wondering how Golette qualifies for this run, the Pokedex entry states, these Pokemon are thought to have been created by the science of an ancient and mysterious civilization. Plus, it looks like a robot, so that's good enough for me. Now that we actually have a usable ally, we can head to the gates of Mesagoza when Nimona makes a mistake of wanting to battle us. Optimus is too strong for a Fukoko, and after a few mud slaps, the baby crocodile falls. Then she brings in Pormi, who only knows Thundershock, which we're immune to. So yeah, Optimus can dispose of that rodent with ease. We enter the city of Mesagoza, and we just continue to press the A button over and over again for what feels like an eternity until we are free from the clutches of the academy. The gym challenge is where I want to start our adventure, and Katie and her bug Pokemon are first up. Optimus does actually resist bug type moves, which is handy, but it's kind of lacking on the attacking side of things. Thankfully, not far from Contondo City, there is a useful team. Rock Tomb. And now we're ready for Katie. Optimus can drop a bunch of rocks on a nimble, but this little fella survives and responds with a struggle bug for pitiful damage. Playing it safe, we go for a pound as it's more accurate and we exterminate her first bug. Tarantula is a little more threatening as it does survive a rock tomb and then hits back with a super effective assurance, but we take it well and we pound it to death on the next turn. Finally, in comes a Turdiosa who can terrestrialize into a bug type, making my rock tomb super effective, bringing it below half, while a Fury Cutter is not very effective at all. This allows Optimus to go for a second rock tomb, crushing the bear and securing our first gym badge. Now it's time to dip our toes into some Titan hunting with the Stony Cliff Titan Cloth being top of the list. Before we track down the giant crab, we climb up this nearby tower and get our hands on the TM for Drain Punch, which will get powered up thanks to our Iron Fist ability. And that's all we need for Cloth. So let's go. We encounter the Cloth, who goes for a block on Optimus, but it won't have any effect, while a Drain Punch does huge damage to the crab. For some reason, it goes for another block, so we just Drain Punch it a second time, ending the first phase, and then we watch it try its best to escape our clutches. Not on my watch, buddy. The second phase is more of the same, as we just use more Drain Punch but it is Arvin Shoulder who does technically land the last shot with the water gun. Arazon City is close by, and it is here where we can find the gym leader Brassius, who we must defeat. The problem is, Optimus does not quite match up well against grass types. And because of the level cap of 17, there isn't any Pokemon that we can catch and be used. But I came prepared for a situation like this, so let's hatch another egg. As Porygon is a man-made artificial Pokemon that qualifies for this run and I give him the name Starscream. Then just outside Arason City, we can find ourselves a useful TM for Starscream, Icy Wind. I make sure it's holding the leftovers and then all that's left to do now is collect a bunch of these stuttering sunflowers before we can finally go face to face with the leader Brassius. Starscream starts things off and thanks to its ability to download, we get a free special attack boost before going for an Icy Wind on the Pettylil who does just survive the super effective hit. A Mega Drain comes our way but it barely puts a scratch in us while we can finish it off with the Swift on the next turn. Smolov comes in and this olive goes down to a single icy win from Starscream. Larsen is a pseudo who does us a favor by terrestrializing into a grass type, meaning an icy wind is now super effective and brings the tree below half its health, while a trial blaze does a decent amount of damage back. But its fate has been sealed as a second icy wind gets the killing blow, and we have successfully defeated Brassius and his Pokemon. 
Hey ladies and gentlemen, just quickly, if you are enjoying the video and you want to show some love to the channel, I would really appreciate it if you could drop a like and click that subscribe button below. Thank you. With a new level cap of 19, we can finally get our hands on an encounter in the wild. Just outside the Pokemon Center in Lavencia City, Magnemites can spawn at exactly level 19 or higher. I was actually on the fence with this one, but I personally think it qualifies as a machine type Pokemon, so I allowed it. Then we get the team for Thunderbolt, which is exactly what we needed for our next big fight against the Titan Bombardier. So after carefully maneuvering ourselves up the mountain, dodging the boulders, Okay, well this is embarrassing. We can reach the top and lock eyes with a giant stalk. Bombardier starts things off with a rock throw for small damage and Megatron shows no mercy with a huge thunderbolt. The bird drops some more rocks on us, but we're okay and we can fry it a second time with a thunderbolt, forcing it to flee. It then takes a quick snack, powers up and then comes back for more, all while we're still not healed. Arvin does come to our aid and he ain't happy. Trying to drop rocks on folks is dangerous. The giant bird goes for another rock throw, leaving us on just 9 HP, while a thunderbolt lands for huge damage, as does a smackdown from Arvin's Knackley. Too low to stay in, Starscream switches in, taking a wing attack from the Bombardier, while Arvin's Knackley drops some rocks on the bird. Hold on a second. That's kinda hypocritical of you, Arvin. Oh well, we get the win, and that's all that matters to me. It's at this point in the run where we can turn our attention to Team Star and their bases. And it's Giacomo and his dark crew at the top of our list. Now before we go charging into the base, there is in fact another great encounter we can have access to below the level cap, and that's Rotom. Now with its ghost type, it's not exactly ideal against Giacomo, but there is a solution to that. You see, if we head to Port Marinada, they hold a bunch of auctions here, and this lady specifically will auction off the Rotom catalogs. Right, so it turns out that I can't get access to that right now, but I always have a backup plan. So I go to my Scarlet file and at the Blueberry Academy we can purchase two items, an upgrade and a dubious disc. Then from here I have Screamstar hold the upgrade first before trading our little Porygon who can evolve into a Porygon too. However, we're not quite finished yet as now it holds a dubious disc while being traded which allows Starscream to become an even more powerful Porygon Z. And if that was not enough, at the lighthouse here we grab one of the strongest moves in the game, Hyper Beam. Okay, let's go beat up Giacomo and his Pokemon. And new level of Starscream makes their debut and gets a download boost, raising his special attack before we start. So yeah, Poor Knight is going to be sent straight to the afterlife after an insane Hyper Beam from Starscream. Giacomo brings in his car and it goes for a metal sound dropping our special defense while we must recharge. Not liking that, Megatron comes in and gets snarled, which is fine as we can bring Starscream back in who gets his special attack raised again while taking a wicked talk well. We go for a protect to get some extra leftovers recovery and then on the next turn a metal sound comes our way dropping our special defense while we retaliate with an insane hyper beam bringing the car below half its health. The star mobile goes for back to back snarls as we have to recharge but we survive the hits on just 12 HP before delivering one final hyper beam obliterating the star mobile and defeating Giacomo. The gym challenge is on my mind, so we head to Leventia City so we can take on the streamer, Iono. But Nimona decides to gate crash and forces us into a battle first. Optimus can make quick work of a rock rough with a drain punch, then a poor me comes in, so we just punch it a couple of times also, taking it out. Last is the crocodile, so Starscream comes in and takes an incinerate to the face before hyper beaming the crocodile straight back to Nimona. With the warm up out of the way, we waste no time and we take on Iono. Starscream once again takes the lead, although this time our download raises our normal attack, which is kinda useless. Nevertheless, an icy win from us is still too much for the watch roll to handle. Iono brings in Belly Bolt and expecting a spark, Optimus tags in for free before Starscream returns to the battlefield, this time getting a boost on its special attack from the download while taking pitiful damage from a water gun. Belly Bolt then pays for it with its life as we hyper beam the frog from existence. Now it's Luxio who comes in, but we need a recharge as the cat sparks us for minimal damage but annoyingly paralyzes us. Optimus decides to come in and take on Luxio himself, and he drain punches the cat twice to secure the KO. Last is a Miss Magius, so we just cheese the Terrestrialized Ghost by switching in Starscream when it uses Hexes, and then Optimus when it uses Charge Beams. Eventually, it runs out of attacking PP, and we can safely exterminate it with Hyper Beams. All right, ladies and gentlemen, somebody call the fire department as we have a fire that needs to be put out. And by fire, I mean Mela and a Team Star fire crew. Mela brings in Torkoal, who sets up the sun with its drought ability, but Soundwave is having none of that, going for a rain dance. Torkoal goes for a flame wheel, which doesn't hurt, 
but it does get the burn on us. Soundwave isn't too fast, and a couple of Electro Balls is enough to eliminate the turtle. Now it's the Star Mobile, so I decide to bring in Optimus, who can take a blazing torque on the switch before dodging an incoming screech and hitting the car with a stomping tantrum. This time it goes for a blazing torque, and of course we get burnt again, which means the next stomping tantrum does even less damage. I decide to bring in Starscream to clean up this mess, who has its special attack raised, and then gets screeched, dropping its defense. A blazing torque comes our way, doing decent damage, and even gets the burn on us, but we don't falter, as the Hyper Beam can absolutely destroy Mela's Starmobile and give us the win. The lurking still tied in Orthwim must be defeated, but before we deal with the slug, we can get another encounter. Conveniently on the way to the Titan, we can find exactly what we're looking for, the room. We named the vehicle Bumblebee, and it's added to the team. Alright, let's slay that Titan. Optimus starts things off, and Orthwim isn't messing around, lending a huge iron tail, almost killing us, while a drain punch does okay damage back. Megatron comes in, taking the iron tail well, and then gets hit with a headbutt, which flinches us. Another headbutt comes our way, and this time it crits, as we deal big damage with a Thunderbolt. Soundwave now comes in, and it ends the first phase with an Electro Ball. The worm runs for its life, but we need to finish the job, so we follow it and we go for round two. Funny enough, in this phase, Optimus can actually just stay in and drain punch the Orthworm over and over as it seems to keep targeting Arvin's Toad School. After a few turns, we land the final punch and we watch as the Titan shrinks in front of our very eyes. Kaskarath for City is now our next point of interest, and it is here that we can find the gym leader Kofu and his water Pokemon. Well, actually, that's technically not true, as he does run and leave town as soon as we arrive. But we just track him down, beat up his apprentice, overpay for some seaweed, and then finally we can head back to Kaskarafa and take on the big fella himself. Actually, I forgot something pretty important. As the level cap is now 30, Megatron can evolve into Magneton. But we don't stop there, as we get our hands on our Thunderstone, and now Megatron can reach his final form, Magnazone. Okay, back to Kofu. Veluza hits our newest evolution with an Aqua Cutter, but it isn't worried and Thunderbolts a fish to its grave. Wugtrio is next in and a Mud Slap doesn't hurt too much, but it does drop our accuracy and of course, we miss our Thunderbolt. Then it goes for another Mud Slap and yep, we missed again. Then it's another Mud Slap and we just keep missing. On the fourth turn, it goes for a Water Pulse and you can't make this up as we get confused. Luckily, Megatron can fight through the confusion and the accuracy drops and it finally hits Wugtrio trio with a thunderbolt. Kofu now brings in his ace Crabobnable, so I switch in Starscream, who gets his special attack raised, before taking a huge rock smash to the face. But it doesn't matter, as we just go for a hyper beam, which is enough to destroy Kofu's crab, giving us the win. So now that we have beaten Kofu, we head back to Port Marinara and we have now unlocked the ability to actually buy the Rotom catalog in the auction. We easily outbid the kids and we get the catalog at a bargain price of 4,500. With this, we can freely change our Rotom types depending on what form we use it in. Team Star once again becomes our priority and this time we have to deal with the ninja and his poisonous tactics, Atticus. So we raid the base and then beat up some of his small fry until he comes out of hiding. Megatron takes control and we go for some non-attacking moves against the Skunt Tank like Magnet Rise, giving us ground immunity and Electric Terrain, boosting our electrical attacks. This is because Skunt Tank only has Sucker Punch that can deal damage to us and it will always fail if we go for a non-attacking move. So once it runs out of Sucker Punch PP, we Thunderbolt the Stinky Mammal a couple of times, ending its life. Reverum now comes in and it hits us with an Insurance, while the Thunderbolt does just over half the car's HP. This means we take another Insurance before we can deliver the final blow and take it out. Muck is next, and we just go for a Magnet Rise, meaning its Mud Slaps can no longer hit us. We can then follow up with an Electric Terrain, making our Thunderbolt stronger, until finally we can drop a couple of Bolts of Thunder on the Purple Flubber, taking it out. The Starmobile is Atticus's last line of defense, and he brings it into fight. Megatron and the Starmobile can trade blows, with flame charges coming our way, whilst we Thunderbolt it over and over. And thanks to leftovers, we're able to outlast the vehicle and take it out, giving us the win. Okay, so after that total domination, I think I deserve a bite to eat. So we go to the famous restaurant in Medali City, uh, well, I think it's famous, but before we can even take a seat, we're thrown straight into a gym battle against the man himself, 
Larry. Larry starts things off by bringing his Kamala, which is perfect as I lead with Optimus. Similar to Atticus and his Skun Tank, only Sucker Punches can deal damage to us, so we just saw the Koala with non-attacking moves like Protects, and even when we do fall asleep with Yawns, we still can't be hit. Eventually it runs out of Sucker Punches, and we punch it twice, taking it out. Now it's the Dunsparce, who goes for a Drill Run, which does hurt, but a Drain Punch hurts even more while recovering our health. Eventually we can land the final punch on the Fat Snake, eliminating it from the battlefield. Larry has no choice, bringing in Seraptor, who also intimidates Optimus. Not taking any risks, Megatron can tag in and gets tickled by an aerial ace as he enters the field. This time the Angry Bird uses a facade, but we take the hit with ease, while a Thunderbolt deals just over half its health. Megatron takes one more facade, and then ends the existence of Larry's Seraptor with a second Thunderbolt. As soon as we step outside, Nimona decides that she wants to take us on and, well, we don't really have a choice. Optimus is still in the lead and her Lycan Rock goes for an insane critical hit bite, leaving our robot on just one HP. Okay, that was a little too close for comfort. We hit back with a Drain Punch and even after the recovery, we ain't staying in. Megatron swaps in with Optimus, taking a couple of bites and then Thunderbolts the Wolf away. Nimona brings in Gumi, so we go for a tri-attack, which ends up freezing the baby dragon solid. It stays frozen solid, and two more tri-attacks is enough to take it out. Now it's Pormo, which is perfect for Optimus, as it's immune to all its moves. Optimus then goes for a few drone punches, killing the Pormo, and healing us back up completely. Finally, she brings in a Skeledurge, so Starscream hard switches in, gets its special attack raised, and then takes a Torch Song on the chin. Okay, I'm not even sure if a Porygon Z even has a chin, but you know what I mean. Starscream then goes for a huge hyper beam, one shot in the fire crocodile, and giving us a win over Nimona. Our next objective takes us all the way to the snowy mountains of Paldea, where we can find the city of Montre Nevera. This place is the home of the local rapper Rhyme, who apparently is a gym leader on the side also. I lead with Starscream and Megatron, and things start off with Rhyme's Burnett sucker punching Starscream before we go for a discharge, which hits everyone on the field breaking Mimikyu's disguise. A critical slash from Mimikyu then brings Starscream below half HP, while a Thunderbolt from Megatron can secure the KO on the Burnett. Rhyme now brings in Houndstone, while the crowd goes wild in the background, raising our stats. Starscream then goes for a Protect, blocking Mimikyu, while Houndstone goes for a Shadow Force, vanishing, which means my Thunderbolt will now miss. This time, Starscream goes for an Icy Wind, which deals damage and drops Mimikyu's speed. Houndstone hits Megatron with a Phantom Force, before he takes out the Mimikyu with a Thunderbolt. Rhyme is forced to bring in her Ace Toxtricity, while the crowd once again goes wild, making us faster. We go for a discharge, hitting everyone and even paralyzing the Houndstone. Megatron then Thunderbolts Toxtricity to its death and Rhyme's Houndstone gets fully paralyzed. We then go for an icy win, followed by Thunderbolt on the Houndstone, securing the win over Rhyme. Asada Desert is our next destination, Oh wait, before I forget, our boy Optimus evolves, looking even more powerful. And what a better time to showcase his skills than by taking on the next Titan. So we track down the robot elephant, and we start the fight. It goes for a knockoff, which does hurt, but a drain punch hits just as hard while healing us up. We then take a second knockoff with ease, and then punch the robot a second time, ending the first phase. Round two is just as easy, only this time I have Ivan Scovillian chipping in with fire fangs, but it is Optimus who ends its life with the stomping tantrum, slaying the Titan. Now that we have slayed the Iron Treads, we can search the desert for a short while, until finally, we find our own robot elephant in the wild. Wasting no time, we catch the Paradox Pokemon, giving him the name Grimlock. The gym challenge once again becomes our priority, and let's still up in a team of psychic Pokemon that need to be punished. But of course, as soon as we enter the gym, Nimona gives us no choice but to take her on first. Excuse me guys, this won't take long. After embarrassing the Mona yet again, we can now turn our attention to the gym leader Tulip. But before we do take her on, I get my hands on a useful TM, Dark Pulse. Then we get ourselves an expert belt to boost the power of super effective moves, and we give that to Starscream. Okay, let's go take her on. Tulip leads with a Farigaraf, which is perfect, as Starscream can come in and get a special attack boost with download. Our robot duck then goes for a Dark Pulse, absolutely obliterating the giraffe in a single hit. Tulip then brings in Gardevoir, which is fine, as now we can just Shadow Ball the waifu to her grave. Her Emu Espartha shares the same fate, and one Shadow Ball later gets the job done. Last is the race floor, Jez, who is thicker than she looks, surviving a Shadow Ball and then landing a big moon blast on Starscream. But we don't die, which means a second Shadow Ball can land, and we take out the voluptuous flower. 
All right, things are about to get cold, so put on your winter clothes and sit next to our fire as we need to head back to the snowy mountains of Paldea as this is where the last gym badge can be found. Grush is the one who stands in our way and this is the perfect opportunity for Bumblebee to have some fun. So we give it the expert belt and off to battle we go. Frostmoth is the first to feel the pain as an iron head can crush the icy bug. The polar bear bear tick also stands no chance and falls to an iron head from Bumblebee. See, Titan is a bulky boy and can survive an iron head while responding with a big liquidation hurting us back. It's fine, however, as the second iron head can finish off the snowball, forcing in Grush's ace, Altaria. Her dragon terrestrializes, becoming an ice type, but to my surprise, this thing can survive an iron head. Thankfully, it flinches, which means we can end its life on the next turn. Although now we do have all eight gym badges and could go and smack around the Pokemon Elite 4, I do have some unfinished business that I want to take care of first. First on the agenda is the Fairy Team Star base and the leader Ortega, who is looking kind of smug at the moment. Bumblebee continues where he left off and one poison jab from our car can end the rabbit Azumarill. Dash Bun is in next and it annoyingly drops her attack with a baby doll eyes so the poison jab doesn't hurt as much. Then it goes for a mud slap, which doesn't hurt, but does drop our accuracy. And of course, we miss our attack. Not wanting to deal with RNG, Soundwave tags in while getting baby doll eyes on the switch. Soundwave then takes a crunch to the face before Volt switching, taking out the dash bun and safely bringing in Bumblebee back in with his attack and accuracy back to normal. Ortega then brings in Wigglytuff, which is just a sacrifice as a poison jab takes it out before it can do anything. Finally, it's the Starmobile, and it comes in and goes for a Steel Roller, which we can take well, while a poison jab does about one third of damage. The car changes its strategy, going for a Confuse Ray, but we remain focused and a second poison jab lands, bringing the car low. It then makes one last desperate attempt to stop us with a magical torque, which is just embarrassing really, while a third poison jab can demolish the car, sending it to the scrapyard. Alright, let's not waste time, we have a time to hunt next. We track down the giant Dondonzo, and Megatron can make quick work of the false dragon titan with a couple of thunderbolts in the first phase. The fish then realises it's outmatched, so it decides to swim away, however we chase it down, forcing it into the second phase. A thunderbolt from Megatron does big damage to the Dondonzo, while an order up tickles us. Arvin's Greedon also chips in, as a takedown does some damage to the fish. On the next turn we drop a second bolt of thunder, and we put an end to the titan. Tatsugiri then decides wants a piece of me, so we oblige and we take it on. Megatron can land a couple of thunderbolts on the sushi, but then when it gets low on health, Soundwave can tag in for us. Soundwave then vault switches, doing minimal damage, but it allows me to bring in Starscream. Starscream then goes for a hyper beam, dealing big damage while the Tatsugiri decides to taunt us. We need a recharge in the next turn while taking a muddy water, but it's all good as the second hyper beam can send the sushi to the afterlife. Team Star is now the last thing on our list to deal with, and it's Eerie and her fighting crew that we need to punish. Although she does look like she needs to go to the toilet. You okay there, Eerie? Grimlock is in charge, and an earthquake from our robot elephant crushes the Toxic Croak. Passiman jumps in, so I pivot into Optimus, who's immune to the close combat, and then into Bumblebee, who can quad resist the seed bomb. We go back and forth a few times until finally it runs out of PP for close combat. Now Soundwave can come back in, taking a seed bomb, before going for a Volt Switch for good damage, bringing in Grimlock. Grimlock then uses Electric Terrain, which will boost its attack stat thanks to its ability Quark Drive. A Rock Tomb then does pathetic damage, while an earthquake can destroy the monkey. Eerie brings in yet another monkey, this time Annihilate. So the strategy here is to switch into Optimus when it goes for close combat because we're immune and then we go to Starscream when it uses Rage Fist. Eventually it runs out of close combat PP which allows Starscream to safely take it out with back to back psychics. Lucario is next so Optimus gets in for free thanks to its ghost typing and then takes a Dragon Pulse for big damage before a Drain Punch can get the KO while healing us back up. Last is the Starmobile so Soundwave switches in while the car goes for a shift gear. A combat torque comes our way, which we take well, while an air slash hits back pretty hard. The Starmobile goes for another shift gear, getting stronger, but we stay on the attack with an air slash, bringing it into the red. It makes one last attempt with a combat torque, but it fails, and one final air slash can put an end to Eerie and her fighting crew. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 
the moment we've all been waiting for, the Pokemon League. Our first opponent is none other than Rika, who specializes in ground type Pokemon. Soundwave takes charge and a Leaf Storm can obliterate the Wish Cash in one hit. As expected, Camera Up comes in, so Optimus can switch in, but annoyingly we get yawned, making him drowsy. We stay in, earthquaking the Camera Up to its death, but Optimus does fall asleep. Now it's Doug Trio, and because Optimus is sleeping, I bring in Soundwave, who watches Doug Trio set up a sandstorm. Doug Trio then lands a rock slide, but we take it well before a Leaf Storm can destroy it. Don Fan is Rika's next Pokemon, but Bumblebee can pivot him for free as it's immune to the poison jab. Starscream can come in, getting a boost to its special attack, and then take an earthquake reasonably well. We then go for an Ice Beam, bringing the Donphan to its dirty, while an incoming Earthquake leaves us on just 14 HP. Either way, we survive the hit, and a second Ice Beam can deal with it. Finally, Rika brings in a race Clodsire, but its time is short-lived, as a single Ice Beam is all it takes to eliminate it from existence. The Steel Master Poppy is next up, and just because she's a kid, doesn't mean I'll go easy on her. Grimlock starts a fight, and Earthquake's a Copperizer, crushing it in one hit. Poppy brings in a giant bell, so I switch in Soundwave who has Levitate, taking no damage from an Earthquake. Soundwave can then just Volt Switch, damaging the Bronzong, allowing me to bring in Optimus to take a Zen Headbutt. One Shadow Punch later from Optimus can send the bell straight back to Poppy. Corviknight is next in, so Soundwave makes another appearance, taking a Brave Bird on the Switch. Once again, we can Volt Switch, bring massive damage to the bird, while Optimus can come in as the Corviknight goes for an Iron Defense. Then Optimus can go for a Drain Punch, ending its life. Magnazone then enters the battlefield, but two more drain punches from Optimus can eliminate it from the fight. Last is a race Tinker Tong, and this little fairy can terrestrialize life and go for an insane Gigaton hammer, leaving Optimus on a measly 24 HP. But we do survive and respond with a super effective earthquake, getting the kill and securing the victory. Larry is back, and this time he wants to take us on with flying Pokemon. Our expert belt wielding Grimlock starts things off again, and this time it goes for a quad effective ice spinner on the Tropius. Seraptor comes in and drops our attack with Intimidate, so Optimus can tag in for free as we're immune to the close combat. Now Grimlock can come back in with his attack back to normal while taking a Brave Bird well. This time we stay in and go for an Ice Spinner which can take out the Angry Bird. Altari is next to come in but it leaves just as quickly as an Ice Spinner obliterates it. Oracorio is also just here to be sacrificed and another Ice Spinner gets the kill. Finally Larry makes things interesting bringing in Flamingo and expecting a close combat I switch in Optimus who's immune uh, um excuse me? Why did that hit me? Okay, so I forgot about Flamingo's ability Scrappy, which basically allows it to hit ghost types with normal and fighting type moves. Yeah, that's my bad. The plan changes, so I bring in Starscream, who gets a special attack boost thanks to the download, before taking a Brave Bird to the face. From here, Starscream can go for a big super effective Ice Beam, which can put an end to the Flamingo and give us the win over Larry. Gita's last line of defense is Hassel, the wielder of dragons. Starstream gets his first start in the Elite Four, and upon coming in, he gets his special attack boost thanks to Download. Nova then hits us with a Super Fang, doing exactly half our health. And that's about as good as it gets for Hassel. You tried your best, mate. So with the so-called Elite Four dismantled, all that's left to do is head outside and take on their boss, Gita. Optimus leads and takes a Lumina Crash well from Espartha before shadow punching the Emu straight back to Gita. Veluza comes in next, so Megatron can switch in with Optimus, taking back-to-back -back liquidations from the fish before dropping a huge Thunderbolt, zapping it to its death. Now it's Avalug, so Soundwave can come in for free due to Levitate and then go for an overheat but he misses. This allows Avalok to land a body press, which does decent damage to us. On the next turn, an overheat does hit, and it's more than enough to deal with a slab of ice. Gita then brings in King Gambit, so I counter it with Optimus, who can eat a Stone Edge with ease before landing a quad effective drain punch, destroying it and healing our health back up. Gagot is next, so Grimlock enters the battlefield as the goat goes for a bulk up, raising its stats. An ice spinner does just over half its HP, but a horn leech can do some damage and then recover some of the HP back to the goat. It's all good though, as two more ice spinners is too much for it and we take it out. Last is a race Glamora, so Optimus makes his way back in and then takes two Earth Powers with relative ease before going for a massive Earthquake, putting an end to Glamora 
and officially giving us the title of champion. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, this is not the end of our adventure. We still need to make our way to Area Zero and take on the true final boss, AI Turo. We go to the lighthouse with Ivan, where Professor Turo tells us he needs our help down in Area Zero. But before we can even go there, we have a few small fry to deal with. First up is Ivan and his mob boss Dead. Then we have Director Clavel and his Meow Skata. Penny then reveals that she's Cassiopeia, so we take her and her Sylveon down. And then finally, it's Nimona and the Skeleturge that needs to be defeated. With them all taken care of, we jump on Mama Rhydon, who can safely fly us down to Area Zero. Then we go deeper and deeper, until finally we can reach the entrance to the lab. Once inside the lab, we meet with AI Turo for the first time, and before we follow him, we pick up a booster energy, which is the perfect item for Grimlock. After a short time, we make our way to the very bottom of Area Zero, where the final battle will be held. Wait, let me check my shoe. Okay, let's go. AI Turo leaves with Iron Moth, while Grimlock comes out, and thanks to the booster energy, our attack gets a boost. Although, a quite effective earthquake was always going to one-shot the metal bug. Turo then seems to be malfunctioning, as he brings in Iron Thorns, who, like the Iron Moth, is obliterated by a quad effective earthquake. Now it's the Iron Jugglers that drops in, and an Ice Spinner is so close to getting the KO, but it survives a hit and hits us hard with a flamethrower. But it's not enough to take us out, so it allows us to finish off the High Dragon clone with a second Ice Spinner. Iron Hand is next in, so I play it safe, switching in Optimus for free, as we're immune to the Drain Punch. We then go for an Earthquake, leaving it on a Slither, while an Iron Hand does small damage back. One Drain Punch later from Optimus can send the Hariyama from Wish straight to the Afterlife. Iron bundle can be tricky to deal with, so Megatron tags in and takes a freeze dry with ease and then a water pulse before going for a huge thunderbolt, frying the fake deli bird in a single hit. Last but not least is the Iron Valiant, so Optimus comes back into the battlefield for free as a Brick Break doesn't affect us. Then a Spirit Break comes our way, which hits pretty hard, but an Earthquake also does big damage back. Playing it safe, I switch in Bumblebee, who gets tickled by Spirit Break. Then the following Brick Break leaves a car low. Before a Poison Jab hits the Robot Guardable so hard, it sends it straight back to the future. And that's that. I've been a Pokemon Violet using nothing but machines. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.